I'm Hiro Takairie from the Denso Corporation. Uh, today I'm going to talk about the application of the quantum hybrid system to the vehicle routing problem. Okay. So why we consider vehicle routing problem? Uh, it's because uh, it's a key problem for the realistic application. Uh, that is a combination of the routing problem and then scheduling problem. So uh, both two are, two are very important. So we can combine and then create a more realistic problem. And also we can also make it more difficult. So uh, the routine problem can represent many different kinds of application. So that's important. So we consider VRP. And uh, in fact, we have already formulated various VRP with realistic situation, uh, which includes a description of the time and the state and the capacity. And but uh, this formulation has some issue because it consumes a lot of qubits. So how large we need? So at least uh, we need require, we need eight thousand logical qubit in this formulation. Uh, for example, uh, last year there was a nice workshop called the QTOP, and I gave a talk and say that at least it require eight thousand logical qubit. So, but that's why. Oh, that's why we are interested in the quantum hybrid system. So that's related to our today's talk. Okay, then the other issue comes up. That is the large scale solvability of the cube formulation. Uh, for example, somebody say that a cube formulation or Eisen model is not good at solving the routing. That comes from the observation in solving the traveling salesperson problem. If we naively implement uh, the cube formulation, then solve it, then you will see the random routes. So these are maybe called random routes. So it's random. So maybe the, this route are not very optimized. So maybe we can use another another solver, but we wish to uh, extract some useful information from these kinds of root optimization problems. Then uh, what we should do is improve the precision. If we have a very high precision uh, quantum uh, or, or Eisen solver, Kivo solver, then this can be resolved. That's one thing. And the other thing is that uh, we can avoid that random route by the formulation or consider some particular problem. Then that problem becomes useful. So these are also related to, to today's talk. And then maybe le let us see later. So, and then also uh, it's in very interesting thing is that hybrid B2 is now available for over 10,000. So such a large system, then whether we can solve the Q, our VLP is one of the problem we will answer to do today. Okay, then what is the problem we consider? So we consider uh, time scheduled VRP with multiple time window. It's a little bit long, but this is something like this. So this is the typical solution of our problem. And then this is something kind of routing problem. Uh, clearly there are three vehicles here. And then 12 customers are visited. And then trail customer all require time window. So this situation also described by this table. So we have some time. So there are two time scheduling and then one time slot is 10, hour, 10 minutes. 
and then there are trail of customer and then this we come back to the depot and then this box with cross means forbidden time so we should arrive the customer avoiding that forbidden time that is the meaning of the multiple time window and then avoiding that forbidden time we should find a good routing so that's very difficult problem but we we would uh, we are going to solve it by using quantum hybrid system okay so how to formulate this by the cube formulation but uh, let's first focus on the TSP because TSP is the simplest case of the BRP. So the conventional TSP is uh, known and it can, we can find in the Lucas paper. So given by this, uh, we can introduce the cubo variable in this table form and the X direction the city and the Y direction is time step. And then this is counting the first arrival, second arrival, something like that. And then we have Hamiltonian. And then this term represents the term which generate the Hamilton pass. So we first generate the Hamilton pass and we assign the cost and then solve the TSP. And then uh, for the later convenience, uh, let's see this uh, Hamilton pass configuration in this table that we can say this is n look configuration. This is consistent with the n look movement. So th this look cannot hit other look. That's the n look configuration. And then we have a cost. Okay, so this is conventional TSP. And then, uh, but we would like to describe the time. But here we say time step, first arrival, second arrival. This cannot be the time. Why? Because, for example, if you have a customer which is far from the other, then travel to that customer will take a time. But for this description, this travel will count one step. So miss the time, time description. So in order to describe the time, we should introduce the timetable, not this type. But in order to describe this, this cannot be captured by the Hamilton pass formulation here. For example, if you look at this form configuration, every cubo uh, in this uh, horizontal direction is zero. But this term requires that some of them should be one. So it is inconsistent. So we should replace this term, Hamilton pass term. So what we should, should do is that first replace this Hamilton pass term. And then second, we introduce the jump in this timetable. Okay. Okay, then first we replace the uh, uh, Hamilton pass uh, ham uh, term. So we can expand this term. This is expansion. Then you will see that this interaction term represent n look penalty. So we have n look move, but if break that n look configuration, there appear the penalty term. So that is come from here. And then this last term with negative sign this is the term which generate the pop-up tendency. If you say the pop-up, that means X variable tends to be one. If we don't have this term, uh, uh, every X becomes zero. That is a ground state. But because of this term, we have a non-trivial configuration, non-trivial end loop configuration. So this is important, but we will not this you we will not use this term. Otherwise, we have a cost, and uh, introduce the negative shift of the cost. Okay, uh, total shift of the cost doesn't change the system. Okay, so this is allowed.
So this also play a similar role to this term. So we use this term. So this is our negative sheet formulation of the TSP. And then uh, we have negative term, positive term. So we have some balance condition that is the here. Next, we introduce a jump. So in the conventional uh, TSV formulation, cost is put in the one step forward. So here uh, we, we have some uh, row, a one step forward row has interaction. So this, this is the way we introduce the cost in the conventional TSP. But in our case, we are describing the time. Travel from one city to the other will take a time, will consume some time stop. So we first introduce the penalty for the early arrival. If we have one here, then we cannot put one here because that means early arrival, early, earlier than we expected. So we introduce a penalty to uh, yeah, describe this one. And then uh, on, on time configuration, on time arrival uh, for the configuration with for the on time, expected time configuration, we put the cost. So this is our formulation. So this is detail, but we also in, input the information of the time duration matrix, which describe how many time we take, okay? So this is the time scheduled TSP we uh, propose. And the VRP, uh, we introduce this uh, time, uh, uh, this TSP table multiple time. So we introduce multiple TSP table, that is the VRP. So this is a VLP. Okay, then what is the result of the beta test? So this is the first trial, uh, five vehicle, 25 customer, 10 time slot, two minutes, two hour. So it's almost 800 logical qubit. Okay, I use a hybrid V2. Next, maybe double. Uh, 2,000, okay, uh, five vehicle, 35 customer or something like that. Okay, but we can make it, make it more. And uh, how large we can get? This is the largest, uh, 44,000 logical qubit. And then solution looks okay. That means we don't have any random root configuration, not indicating the random root. So it's very non-trivial solution uh, we can obtain. So uh, this is the 12 vehicle, 160 customer and 29 time slot. That is five hour almost. That's in fact very huge, but we can obtain a solution. And unfortunately, we missed the customer called 101 here. That means it was hard to find the best good route to get that, that customer. So we can increase, increase, for example, vehicle, but that is not allowed because uh, our local machine had a problem in allocating the mo uh, memory. So that was the maximum value. But the uh, uh, hybrid V2 is still okay. So maybe we, sh we can shape up the program and then we can try further. Maybe hybrid V2 can solve. So that is the performance, large scale performance of the hybrid V2. So that's very promising, very, very large system. We, uh, that's very, very large system. So that's the result of beta test. Okay, and then let me uh, comment on the performance. 
So we have a hybrid B2 and the previous hybrid B1. Uh, there is improvement in the weak uh, energy. So we consider 10,000 variable around that is the maximum bound for the hybrid B2, B1. But we could get a soli better solution in this regime. So uh, that's good, uh, uh, good result. And the hybrid B1 maybe it show a little bit a random root, but here hybrid B2 is okay. So that's our result. Okay. Then uh, next step is how do we go further? Uh, this is a proposal, and not not the solution now, but uh, we are proposing how to go further because this is an important problem in the future of the quantum computing or hybrid quantum computing. So our question is how is the effective classical quantum hybrid system? So here is we have a time computational time objective function to maximize and his optimum. And then this is a typical trend of the classical based computation. So we can reach these solution by classical mean, but uh, it, it not really easy to get the optimum. Usually for example, some classical solver is very powerful that means, or very fast, that means the early speed is very fast, but it doesn't guarantee that it can get the ground state. That's uh, always the issue in the classical computation, but uh, quantum computation, maybe uh, we expect to break the, that uh, limit. So one way to break that limit is we think that at some point uh, we transfer the computational information of the classical solver to the quantum one and then leads to the ground state. So that's one thing, uh, one we expected. So, but whether we can do it, uh, we propose a one way. So let me show it. Uh, let me uh, uh, show today. So this is a collaboration, uh, result of the collaboration with RICAM. And then uh, Lian san, Doi san, Gongyo san, Hatsuda san, uh, people in RICAM. So, so this is a collaboration uh, between the DENSO and the RICAM. Okay. And then our way is something like this. Uh, for the continuum part, we use the Mokyo dynamics. That is a continuum based optimization. Uh, any continuum based optimization is fine. And then uh, there are several continuum based optimization. And then they all claims to be very fast, but it does not guarantee that it can get the good precision of the solution. But that's that's common feature, but that's okay for our hybrid system. So we also introduced a similar uh, system by the Mokir Dynamics. Uh, we call the classical imitation of the quantum annealing. Maybe you can say CQA. And then uh, we can uh, we can let the Mokir to imitate the quantum annealing classically. That's interesting. And then the Mokyo dynamics are uh, known to be uh, effectively described by, uh, simulated by the GPGPU. And then by the classical imitation of the quantum modeling, we can get some so good solution of the IZ model. Not grand state, but that's fine. And then because it is a continuum uh, Mokyo dynamics classical value, so we can see the trajectory. So uh, we can sort. If you sort, uh, for example, 10,000 variable can be sorted something like here. And then most of the variable are in fact determine which way to go. That's interesting uh, discovery. 
and then small number are still wondering which way to go. So we can collect that variable and send to the D-Wave or more uh, high precision hybrid system. So this is our proposal. So for example, we check that the precision uh, and then classically it's hard to get the uh, ground state, but by using this method, we can easily get the ground state. So we are now trying to apply this technology to our BLP. Maybe next meeting uh, I will report it. Okay, this is summary. Uh, the most, uh, uh, the biggest mis message I should send today is that uh, Leap Hybrid V2 is capable uh, over uh, 44,000 and more. And then maybe quantum uh, uh, cube formulation can give a non trivial solution. So don't afraid of uh, creating the cube formulation. That's my message. Thank you. That's all. Thank you.